Mark Pope making a very loud entrance into the program. We expect nothing less, my friend. Welcome. How are we, boys? We're oh. great. We're, we're stoked. We're talking uh, hoops in October. We're it's about great. to cross over. Love it. It just got cold. It's so beautiful. Okay, uh, we're that much closer to an actual basketball game after a crazy last six months for you. In fact, how would you explain the last six months in your tenure as the BYU basketball coach? Uh, I think it's, it's awesome, right? I think you don't ask for anything more. Uh, keep things dramatic and interesting. <laughs> and We're trying to write a story every day. And uh, the best part has been getting to know these young men because we have spectacular young men that are really uh, digging in and, and trying to accomplish something special. You have 6 a.m. practices right now. What's the, what's that like? When do you get into the gym in the morning? I actually don't come to the 6 a.m.s. I just come to the afternoon practice. Let those no. <laughs> <laughs> what's been remarkable about this crew is that we have not had a, a anybody show up late yet. Because wow. I actually sit in my office and I'm like, okay, when is the day going to be? Because then we teach our guys not to be late. These guys won't let me teach them. They're unbelievable, and they come in with juice every day, and they're focused, and they're working hard, and we have unbelievable leadership at every turn on this team right now, and so it's been fun. It's been really great, and, uh, you know, there, there's a definitely a grind to it, no doubt about it, but these guys have, have risen to the, you know, the, to the occasion, and they're working hard. Why is that, you think? Senior group? I think it's a senior group. I think it's a veteran group. I think it's a hungry group. I think it's a group that has some, genuinely has some questions about who we can be and some nervousness. And I think it's a group that right now is believing in work. They believe that, that the work pays off. And that sounds so trite, but actually it's a, it's a missing concept a little bit in the world today. These guys think they work really hard. They're going to have great success, and they're buying into that, and they will. How have you handled the adversity and the challenges in – let me rephrase it. What's been the most challenging part of handling the unexpected things that you can't really prepare for? Um, that's that, that's just sports, right? That's what makes it great. Um, you know, I, I'll say this a thousand times. I mean, we talk to our guys every day. We talk to them about like, hey, this game, in a big sense, this game asks you every day how you're going to respond. That's what's interesting about the game. The, the game is not interesting about your game plan going into a game. It's asking you, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond to something going wrong uh, on the court with the refs, with the fans? How are you going to respond to something going wrong in the course of the season? How do you respond? That's what it asks you. And the great players ring the bell. And the great teams ring the bell. And so it's, um, you know, this is, this, is, this is what we do as athletes and coaches. We learn how to respond and we try and figure it out. And, um, and these guys certainly are, are focused on trying to do that. The next thing to figure out is, okay, how does the on-court product uh, differ schematically without Gavin Baxter? Yeah. You've talked about perhaps we go small, we'll figure it out. And you still have some time to figure it out, but what are some of your thoughts there? Of, okay, without Gavin, what now? Well, I can tell you one thing absolutely without a shadow of a doubt for sure. We're going small because <laughs> we don't have any big guys. <laughs> so we will be small. So you have the answer already. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes, uh, you know, um, I mean, I, I could give you a thousand examples, but sometimes circumstance actually forces you to um, to be creative. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's terrifying uh, and it's worrisome. But there's been time after time after time where teams kind of raise up in those circumstances and they actually accomplish special things that people don't think they're going to be able to do because they're not maybe a perfect group on paper. And so uh, we're certainly being stretched now in how we approach the game and how we think about the game. And, and we're going to play small because we just don't have any big bodies. And, um, and it's going to be fun and it's going to be entertaining. And people are going to see uh, these kids whole heart and their soul laid out on this floor and it's going to be inspiring. You probably had an idea of schematically what you wanted to do going into the season. Does that change now with this? Do you have to adjust schematically? Yeah, I mean, we did. I mean, it, honestly, we spent, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually much more comfortable playing small, not, not quite this small. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've had Jake Toulson playing the four for me for the last couple of years. And having incredibly skilled players one through four has kind of been how we've played a lot. And so we spent the, the, uh, the you know, the summer and, and the, the trip to Italy um, really focused on kind of working on some things where we had two big different skill set guys on the floor. And, and so I think we have some versatility that way. Right now, you know, when we get Yoli back, uh, that front line is still going to be really interesting. We'll be able to go a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller at times. And so it's going to be functional for us to be able to do both. Does this automatically mean more three-pointers are going up because you are 
playing small. Well, I like to shoot. You know, come on, that's what we do, man. We're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna guard really hard. Uh, we're gonna be really aggressive. Uh, we're gonna get to the free throw line. Um, we're gonna make sure that we get paint touches consistently, and we're gonna shoot every single open shot we have. And if guys don't shoot open shots, they're gonna come sit by me for the rest of the game. So that's that's uh, that was one of the gifts that Coach Patino gave us as players in college, um, because it, it kind of takes a lot of it different nuances, you know, things that you might be concerned to play are out of the picture. And so we're going to play. I mean, you know, that's going to be dictated by the defense. It's going to be what the defense gives us. So they're giving us shots. We're taking them, man. We shoot. And this team can really, really shoot it. Uh, we do a bucks drill to start every practice. It's a shooting drill. And I've had really, I've had top 50 shooting teams in the country the last three years. And I, I've never had a team shoot the ball like this. I mean, the score is not going to mean anything to you, but the fact that we're consistently between 150 and 160 is crazy. The marker's 130. And in the past, I've said, if we get to 160, we're shutting down practice. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this crew can make shots, and, and it's going to be one of the things that's really dangerous about this team. Who are the best shooters on the team? Um, Coach Burgess making shots, man. You, you put out a video. You saw that yesterday, footer. right? He's shooting at one foot for two. He's so bored. He's so bored with making shots. He's like, shoot him off one foot from 28. He's supposed to miss for the rebounding drill, <laughs> yeah. and he can't miss. So, uh, you know what? We have shooters all around. I mean, this TJ Hawes is going to be, a, he's going to shoot the living daylights out of the ball. And this Jake Toulson is a proven, proven, proven shooter. He's the one guy that he's going to be dangerous at a new level this year because he's actually, he's going to get shots off quicker. And, this Trevin Nell is a freshman who's going to really, really shoot the ball well for us. And Dahl Nixon is shooting the ball well for us. And you kind of go down the list. Jesse, uh, Wade. Jesse Wade is going to make a ton of shots for us. And Zach Selyus, one of my happiest moments in the last six months. I'm sitting in the office. Guys are in half an hour before the afternoon practice yesterday. And I look out. I'm just at my desk. And I can see out the window onto the court. And I saw Zach Selyus shooting a three, and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I was so happy. This Zach said was going to make a ton of shots for us, and Connor Harding is shooting the ball well. And I mean, you know, we have a – it's one of the things about playing the lineup that we're going to be forced to play is we're going to have a lot of guys on the court that can really shoot it, really pass it, make plays, come off ball screens. Uh, we'll have a versatile group. We know that Gavin Baxter suffered an unfortunate shoulder injury, but you mentioned Zach Selyus. H how is Zach's health and his progress as he's coming back? He's doing great. He's uh, he's been listen. He has been working so hard. Uh, you know, um, you know, he was he was in the cast for the first four weeks, three weeks, and then he got into a boot. And in the boot, we got to put him in the pool on the treadmill down at the facility. And so he was. Uh, I was getting pictures from Coach Sork, who's been unbelievable every day with. Is started out, uh, you know, Zach just floating around with his rubber ducky in her tube, and then he got it. <laughs> actually, got to the point where he's kind of walking and jogging and getting some pace on the treadmill. And uh, you know, they've been he's been working so hard. So his 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 return is is going really fast, and and he's going to be back. He'll be back. I, I feel really good about him being back. Hopefully by the season open. That's incredible. Because when did when did he break his foot? It was on the Italy trip. When, when in August. August. Yeah. Right. So we literally it happened, and and you know, <laughs> so the first thing was to try. And take care of him, you know, make sure he was fine. And then two minutes later, the only thing going through my mind is, all right, let's count out these, count out this time. And so I think we had five days left on the trip, uh, and and we knew kind of the general idea of the recovery time. And it would, and we're playing with the, you know, this November fourth date. And so we're like, we gotta send him home tomorrow. So we got him on a plane. We, we actually tried to get him on a plane the next morning, and things went sideways. We finally got him on a plane the next morning. But those four days, you know, might be the difference between him actually being a suit up for the opener. So, wow. So it's you know it was it's a uh, super time sensitive. He deserves this. He's worked so hard this summer, and then since he's got and he and he had two unbelievable games in Italy. I mean, he might have been the best player on the floor the first two games in Italy. He was unbelievable. Mm. And um, and he worked so hard defensively this summer. He was locked in. And so it's going to take him a minute to get that back. But he's hungry for this season. I'm so glad he's going to be able to play in all these games. We've been talking about program expectations and first year and everything that's gone into this um, and maximizing the talent of this group. Is it too hard of a line to say NCAA tournament or bust with this group? Or is it, hey, let's just be our best selves? Um, well, here's the thing. Is is yeah, I mean, we want to go to the NCAA tournament. We'd like to win the NCAA tournament, right? Uh, we'd like to go to the WCC tournament and win the WCC tournament. We'd like to go to Maui and win Maui. Um, but I, I think that when you get too locked into that picture, for us, 
for fans, man, I hope the fans are like, hey, these guys go to do all this stuff. But for us, our focus literally has to be on today, on getting better today, right? Because if we get too, first of all, what we're doing right now takes so much emotional and physical energy. Just camp right now takes so much energy that if we're spending a lot of time thinking about what's happening then and not focus on what's happening today, we're missing out on getting better. So for us, this is what we know. We know that because of circumstance and because of the way basketball works, we have got to be playing our very best basketball at the end of the season. That is our goal. And the only way to do that is to get better every single day and to take every single victory and every single setback and every single trick that happens to us along the way and find, find a way to grow from it. And so our focus is squarely there. Um, we, we expect to be a very, very good team by the end of the season. That's the expectation we put on for ourselves. We have a bunch of individuals, a bunch of seniors that expect to have a very, very special year. And so falling short of that is unacceptable. So, you know, exactly how that's going to shape up, I don't know. That's for you guys to talk about. For us, we're talking about getting better every single day. BYU Basketball Media Day on BYU Sports Station continues with the head coach, Mark Pope. Speaking of expectations, what can we expect on October 23rd at BYU's version of Midnight Madness? I'm so hyped, man. Anything happening at midnight has got to be good in the Marriott Center. Are we in the Marriott Center? We're in the Marriott Center, right? You tell I, us. I don't know. We're in the Marriott Center. I, pretty, know. I think we're in the Marriott Center. Yeah. Uh, we actually just had our first meeting about that today. I know the marketing department's working really hard on it. And it what starts it, at 1030, by the way. So you're going to go well, to midnight? Yeah, but we're not. No, I think we're actually like 1030 is like all the fun warm up stuff. Oh, I think gotcha. we're rolling at 1201. This is like throwback Midnight Madness. Mm -hmm. This is the way that I did it in college. Uh -huh. You're sitting in the locker room, looking at the stands just packed, people going crazy, and we can't walk on the floor till 12.01. So I don't exactly know that's how I actually, <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> and I'm so happy I don't know yet. The fact that I don't have to know that yet is one of the things that makes BYU extraordinary. Yeah, That is a school night, so go ahead and be sick on Thursday. No, no, go to 24th. school, man. You gotta come party with us in the Marriott Center for Midnight Madness and then go to class and talk about and it. And then take a nap. I'm Amen. Talking, I'm talking elementary school kids, man. Yeah, these college kids are always up at midnight. Okay, we buried the lead here. Uh, you you drove in like a NASCAR oh my goodness. vehicle in Vegas on the Speedway last week. It was so unbelievable. I kid you not. It was so awesome. How so fast we, were you going? You, just you? No, no. So it was. It, so we had a contest. You know, you were I mean, smart feel, right? It's 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 BYU Gonzaga. That's what it is. St. Mary's great, obviously. Pe Pepperdine, San Francisco, a ton of great teams. I'm not trying to offend anybody, okay? But right now on this day, it was head to head, the great Mark Few and the winless. At BYU so far, Mark Pope. <laughs> Even matchup. Not only that, but F Coach Few is really athletic. You know, he goes and he does, uh, you know, he's on the lake skiing and wakeboarding and doing flips and stuff. And I am not. I'm actually really big and I don't have good balance. And <laughs> ideally, I don't really fit in this car. So they had to get the Jimmy John's car four, which I was so hyped about because Jimmy it John's, was, was sponsor bad. of BYU Athletics. Thank you so much. So... They knew this car would fit because apparently six months ago, Charles Barkley came and he fit in this car. And he fits in a different way. So I was like, if I don't fit in this car, man, I'm never going to hear the end of it. Was it just you in the car? Just me driving. Oh, my God. Let's go. So there's a, the, here's the thing is that I got in and you, 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 it's stick shift. So you have to get to fourth gear. Literally by the time you get out or off the straightaway. Uh -huh. Well, that's you on University Avenue. Yeah. Well, shh. And... <laughs> And this ramp that you're turning on is 22 degrees oh, pitched. Oh, steep. Wow. And so you have to get this instructional deal. And they said like 17 times, if you come down on the apron on the ramp, you're going from the 22 degrees to the ramp, you're going to spin out and die. I mean, they basically said that over and over again. So I'm like, you know, I'm nervous. Now. <laughs> Went around the first lap. I, I kid you not, I was, I was cooking at like 32 miles an hour. <laughs> And so they gave they gave me like seven laps, and then by the end, like we were flying. It, I, you feel like you are in a rocket ship, and the whole deal is like you go just as fast in the straightaway as you do on the turn. Like you're not picking a pedal up at all. Wow. wow. So uh, so I think they clocked me at 140, 146.8, 7 miles per hour. It was Woo! unbelievable. That's, a, that's quite the thrill on the turn, bro. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I'm glad you're And, alive. and you summoned your can, we, can we put those pictures out? Because tell me I do not look great. So my only request was I was like, please, because BYU TV was there. 
I'm like, please. Can we just stop the car on the turn and let me run up and down the thing on, in a diaper, screaming, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <laughs> but they said that that would not be appropriate for BYU TV. I was so disappointed. You talked to the wrong people. Oh, man, I was bummed. Oh, would have been shake, shake and bake. No, shake, shake and bake, baby. And, and then you were interviewed after, and you did this with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Uh, Great That's to talk awesome. to you, Coach. Appreciate oh, you guys. Man. Fantastic stuff. Okay, oh, Midnight Madness. Yeah, let's October get some karma for, for yeah. Midnight Madness, figuring yep. all that out, and for the approaching season. Thank you, guys. You right, got thanks, it. Mark. Okay.